Anywho, <laughs> we're here to talk about Explore. Um, and for those who don't know, Explore, the Explore story is a 30-year story. It spans over six platform generations. And over that time, it has grown to mean a lot to our customer segment and our, our customer audience. Um, we've been saying all week, it seems like everybody has an Explore story. For me, I grew up in Detroit, um, single uh, family household. Um, with our, my first memories of a family vehicle was a 99 Ford Explorer. We, I grew up in that vehicle. We spent summer vacations in that vehicle. Um, I honestly accredit that vehicle for starting my love affair of automotive. So I'm really excited to be standing next to this vehicle. And I think someone who could probably talk about the marketing positioning and our customer base better than me is uh, the product marketing manager for Explorer, Andrew Stay. Andrew Stay. Yeah, thanks, Dan. I appreciate you all for coming out. Uh, my name is Andrew Staley. I'm the Explorer Product Marketing Manager. I've uh, been for about eight years. Many of those years spent on the Explorer program here. Uh, but my Explorer story, it starts long before that. Um, Explorer was actually my first adult vehicle purchase, right? My first big boy purchase. And a lot of great memories uh, with that vehicle. It's an honor to, to be in this position. And uh, uh, one of my favorite memories is that was the vehicle that my wife and I, we chose to take from our wedding ceremony to the wedding reception, right? So we think of all the Mustangs, all the sports cars that we could have chose, we chose our Explorer. So I think that's what it's all about. It's Explorer is there for you in the moments that matter. And uh, a big reason for that is just due to its versatility, right? There's not a, a situation in which Explorer is uncomfortable. Um, if you want to, uh, you want to haul seven passengers, you want to haul a vehicle full of cargo, including sheets of plywood, you want to go through six inches of snow, or you want to run, want to run 143 miles an hour on the racetrack. Um, Explorer is comfortable and thrives in all those situations. Um, and that was a key differentiator, even going back to 1991. I mean, Explorer was made for the everyday adventure, uh, those that take the road less traveled. Uh, it was key key breakaway for us. It was we're truly one of the first vehicles of its kind back in 1991, and it helped pave a uh, pave a path for many of the nameplates that are in the industry today. But since then, um, we went out and we did customer research, and we're learning customer needs and wants are evolving over time. Um, and a big part of that is Explorer customers their their lives are even busier. So juggling between me time, family time, work time. Uh, they're spending so much more time in their vehicles where connectivity is now a must. Interior environment, there's such a greater emphasis on that now. Um, so their, their vehicle, it's a, uh, a place of rejuvenation, a place of, hey, this is my sanctuary away from the chaos of everyday life, right? So Explorer, we also needed to evolve and change to meet those customer needs. And the 25 mile later Explorer, it does just that. Um, so I'm excited for it. I think it's truly the best Explorer that we've ever made. Momentarily, you'll hear from the folks that made this vehicle possible. We'll do an engineering and trim series overview. We'll get into the completely redesigned interior, and then we'll wrap it up uh, with a review of technology. We'll get into Ford Digital Experience and hands-free highway driving with Ford Blue Cruise. So with that, I'll hand it over to Kelly, our Chief Program Engineer. Thank you, Andrew. Um, and thank you all for taking the time out to come here. Um, my name is Kelly Clark, I'm the Chief Program Engineer, um, and I've worked at Ford next month 32 years. Funnily, uh, most of my jobs have been in vehicles that are not Explorer, but I always drove an Explorer. I have many stories, many memories, and uh, for me, the Explorer was always that vehicle that I was the one that would wake up in the morning and look out of my window just to take a look at that car. I'm a big fan of Explorer, so I'm thrilled a couple years ago I got the opportunity to work on this. So the Explorer is built and has been in all six generations on a very solid foundation. As Andrew stated, it's extremely versatile. Performance and capability have never been anything that we're not proud of. Um, but as we go forward looking at what we really want to do differently, um, we actually went in and talked to customers through, uh, through many forms, surveys, and actually in person. And we heard from them what they wanted as standard. They didn't want to keep checking boxes. They wanted as standard. So things like um, blind spot detection, uh, adaptive cruise control with stop and go. Uh, today I turned on my heated seats, that's standard. Um, and, and, and the like. Uh, it's 100% standard trailer tow, so every customer can tow class three, 5,000 pounds. 
Um, the other thing we still have is the train management system between six-ish modes, depending on what, you, what kind of roads you're driving on and what your interest is. We have that. And then, uh, as we're getting to a, a lot more later, but I do want to say that the interior was designed uh, and inspired by the elements, and so we'll kind of go through where that came from. Real focus on the interior, those soft touch materials. Customers spend most of their time in the interior, so we wanted to really uh, knock it out of the park. And as Dustin will tell you, um, I think it was just brilliantly executed. Um, some of the other things I want to talk about in terms of the screen for me, um, you know, it's Goldilocks, just the perfect amount of tech. Uh, not too much, not too little, but exactly what we need to do for our customers as we all evolve uh, to, to the changing needs. Um, our face series is called the Active, and in all those elements I mentioned that were standard are on the Active. In addition, we have a, a 300 horsepower 2.3 liter as standard. The next series is the ST line, that's the one I'm getting in red, of course. Um, and that also has a 2.3, and it's got more of a performance and has its design with red stitching. Um, you get an opportunity to get into blue cruise, which again we'll talk to you a bit more about, and then there's a wireless phone charger that um, is executed, so, again, as I think about custom really, really well. Uh, the next series in that is the Platinum, it starts at 2.3 liter, also, but you can get a V6, 400 horsepower uh, engine on that series. The Platinum really focuses on those design element inspired interior, perforated seats. The, you know, the quilting, that leather surface that really uh, is its luxury. And then finally, as you see here, um, we have an ST. Uh, that only comes with V6. It is the fastest um, SUV we have on the market under 60 grand. And it really kind of means even more into those red design views. Um, a lot of fun to drive. I'm really excited that you guys are going to be, I think we have more STs out there and ST lines than anything, so you'll definitely get a chance to go. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Dustin, who I thought might give us a bit of a story behind the background of the interior and, and some of the Easter eggs that his team developed. I'm um, Dustin Jezarski, uh, Chief Engineer of the Interior of the uh, All New Explorer. And uh, yeah, we're super excited to show you what we've got here. Uh, we're sharing some stories about our Explorer past. Um, I was a little different. I didn't grow up in an Explorer. My family was always a sedan and a, an F-series truck fan kind of family. Um, so I didn't really get into it to college. Uh, it's a little different experience for an explorer side. Um, being a freshman in school, you didn't have a car, so you're always trying to find out for class when they had cars. And uh, luckily I found some friends that had their parents any power of explorer. Um, so from that side of me, like my introduction to explorer was all about luxury. That was, uh, at that time, one of the few luxury SUVs out there. And uh, so that was, uh, I'm bringing a lot of that into this, as you, you'll see in the uh, platinum and such that you thrive today. I'm trying to bring that level of luxury that I remember back in the day that uh, this vehicle can totally provide. So going into the spaces that we have, uh, we talked a lot about family, adventure, chaos, right? The, the day that these customers have uh, is a quite a variety. And we want to make a space that can be comfortable, relaxing, a, a getaway, right? And when we looked at your home environment, where are some of the spaces that you do that at home? And your living room is really where that's at. So we want to how do we bring that living room environment into the vehicle? And so we started looking at the living room, what do you have in there, your couches, your carpets, your side tables. Uh, the flat screen TV is a big one, right? Everyone's got one. And that's really the centerpiece of what is in your space. So on this new interior, we really focused on that. The, the new 13.2 inch control screen is really the centerpiece of what we work with. We set that up, put it in the perfect ergonomic position, and then work from there. So again, going back to that living room environment, that's where you start and then you build from it. So the console table, your audio, how do you interpret that into the space? We've got a fabric wrap sound bar that stretches from coast to coast through the interior, really accentuates the width. And that fabric is across all series and all the environments. And then again, it goes back to your home, some of those new materials, the softness that we're bringing into your Auto space. Uh, and then the TV, what's the TV sit on? Right, a lot of the old console tables. We've got a very tactile, we call it a finger perch, a uh, place you can locate your fingers to navigate through the screen. And we even have ridges on it too. Part of it is a, a really special tactile detail, 
It also allows you to when you put your finger through there, gives you a really stable place to position as you're driving to be able to work through the screen. And those details go and extend through the passenger side, shows off the Explorer brand, leads you into the register areas, and all the touch points for the interior are all in that same sort of bright work, that bright silver places. Um, again, from a harmony standpoint, tells you touch here, touch there, and really calling out to those parts. As we walk through the instrument panel, another big thing was cell phones, right? We, we've always designed our cup holders for years. How many cup holders can you put in a vehicle? They've kind of subsided a bit. Now we're focusing on phones. Where do you put your phone? Most people, in the cup holder, right? Kind of contradicts the whole cup holder function. So we want to give a dedicated place for the phone. Right? It's a very premium device. It should have its own special place. Everyone wants to have it within reach while you're driving. You know, we don't want to provoke that, but we know how it happens. So through the interior, we've got a space right around the center stack of the instrument panel of the screen. That'll fit two phones. Um, as you go in the higher series, we've got integrated wireless charging. And that'll, again, ergonomically, from the user experience side, as you reach out, it's perfectly placed. The instrument panel really reaches out to you to present that for you to place your phone. And uh, we really wanted to make that part of the environment. That area of the interior, and as well as everything, as you reach out around your space, it's all soft touch now. So everything you're gonna reach out your hands, your legs, uh, it's all soft wrapped in vinyl and stitched, showing off that premium materials and craftsmanship, and just a nice, soft, easy place to be in, right? These, these customers are sitting in uh, lines at school and practices and everything else, and there's times that you're gonna be sitting here for a long time, you wanna have a comfortable environment. Uh, more storage going on for the console. We have a uh, similar to today's vehicle. We've got a closed, concealed storage area that also has a 12 volt and USB power port, um, and you can hide your items into there as well. And we have new console rails that are again wrapped and stitched. And again, that's from a, a knee display standpoint, more comfort, more soft touch areas. And they also rise up as they go into the instrument panel. And that gives another area if you want to drop a handbag or a wallet. Uh, areas that you can set up quickly as you get in the vehicle and there's containment from side to side, especially when you're in the ST on the autocross today, you'll see where that's important. Some other areas, uh, color materials. Uh, one thing we're really proud of on the Platinum Series, we have a light and a dark interior. Typically that's a light gray and a black. We want to go a little bit better, a little bit more on that, and from an Explorer standpoint, really look into the elements, as Kelly mentioned. So for a light interior, we looked into water water as an element of the earth, and we looked at salt crystal flats. Um, what, what, else, what else is out there? And I give you the light interior, and you'll see that reminiscent of the salt crystal areas from out west. And that's what really inspired the light interior, great for down south, and really gives it a nice contrast to the light and dark interior, really give that premium aspect on the platinum. On the dark side, images really dark there, um, we don't want to go just black, we want to do something different, something that's got a nice richness to it, really elevate that space. So we looked at the desert. Um, so we went to the Mojave Desert, and when you look at the sunset out there, uh, you get just beautiful colors through the, the dust of time there. So we call this Mojave Dust, and that's really capitalizing on the, the, as you said, the sunset going through, you get these beautiful purple hues um, right at sunset. So you'll see that, we have one out there today, and it's this really rich, dark, purplish black um, interior that's just, to me, it's super luxe. Uh, it's a great spin on black and a dark interior without going all the way. We do have black interior on ST, and again, we have the red stitching, as well as some really interesting ST logos on the upper seat packs that as you walk, they kind of appear and disappear. So it's kind of a fun play on a uh, logo without being totally in your face. Um, and some details I want to touch on. As you open the door on the driver's side, on the end of the instrument panel, um, we talked a lot about the, the family aspect and how proud we are of this vehicle for the 30 years that it's been around and the people that it takes to build this vehicle. So on the driver's side, we've got um, kind of a pictogram of Detroit. And that's really giving a hard shout out to everyone here, uh, all the men and women that have designed and developed this vehicle in Dearborn, in your Detroit area. And on the passenger side, we've got a Skyline of Chicago. Um, and that's another one that 
you know, my designer that worked on that, he's, he's really familiar with Chicago. He wanted to make sure we didn't just do it from the waterfront that has the typical skyline, but we did it from the south side. So you can get images of the bean and all that, uh, Hancock Tower and all that. Um, and that's really to celebrate the assembly plant that this has been built for so many years and really just celebrate them all the time that they put into this vehicle. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it on to Blue Cruise. We're going to go on the other side of the room. My name is Eric Romzik. Uh, I'm the product director for Blue Cruise. And I am really, really excited to talk to you about Ford's hands-free highway driving technology. Uh, like others here, I have my own Explorer stories. Um, Actually, Explorer was the, the vehicle that I learned how to drive on uh, and later became my first vehicle, 1998 Explorer Sport. Uh, I later drove that car through high school where I met my wife. Uh, we spent a lot of date nights uh, you know, using that Explorer to, to, to go to the places we wanted to go and uh, got a lot of great memories. So it means a lot to me and uh, it's, it's kind of a full circle moment to now talk to you about hands-free highway driving uh, now on the 2025 Explorer. Um, just show of hands, I guess I, I, I recognize some of you, uh, but who has driven Blue Cruise before? Many of you. Ah, okay. Well, for those who haven't, I think there's a couple that haven't, I'm super excited to get you into a Blue Cruise equipped vehicle. Uh, later this afternoon, you're going to have a great uh, time driving I-94 uh, hands-free. And for those who have driven it, this will be a little bit of a refresher. Um, but Blue Cruise works on 97% of controlled access divided highways in the U.S. and Canada. Um, it effectively allows you to take your hands off of the steering wheel and your feet off of the pedals, while Blue Cruise controls the acceleration, the braking, uh, the in-lane control, um, all while maintaining a safe distance from the vehicle in front of you. Um, now it is a level two assisted driving technology, which means that you as the driver are responsible uh, at all times uh, to take control of the vehicle, um, as well as, you know, occasionally having to put your hands back on. Um, but we're super excited to offer it on the 2025 Explorer uh, for the first time it's on Explorer. Um, it's available on ST line trims and above, uh, and customers who purchase a Blue Cruise equipped vehicle have the opportunity to, to also purchase a discounted one year plan if they're not ready to do that yet, then customers will be given a complimentary 90-day trial of Blue Cruise, after which point they can then purchase a monthly or an annual plan. And we've really focused on giving this customer the type of flexibility that um, you know, they can use Blue Cruise as it best fits their lifestyle. Um, so think about, you know, it's summertime, uh, there's a lot of soccer, you know, travel soccer tournaments, travel uh, softball tournaments, and so maybe the family's doing a lot of traveling during the summer, but maybe that can all winds down after the summer season, and they don't they don't drive on the highway as much. That's where the monthly plan is perfect for that customer. Um, however, if someone uses Blue Cruise in their daily commute, which is one of the most popular use cases for Blue Cruise that we hear from customers, then they can buy the annual plan. Um, so we're really trying to give flexibility to our customers, this customer especially. Um, on when to use hands-free highway driving. Uh, the Explorer ships with Blue Cruise 1.2, which uh, built upon our first generation product that's been in market since 2021, uh, with two really, really great features. Uh, the first is assisted lane change, which just by a tap of the turn signal indicator uh, allows you to make a lane change hands-free. Uh, the second really great feature is called in-lane repositioning. And the way in-lane repositioning works is it just sort of nudges the vehicle over the lane subtly, providing a more comfortable distance between your vehicle and one that's adjacent to it. So think about a scenario where a big semi-truck's coming next to you, maybe kind of impeding your lane a little bit, it just kind of nudges the vehicle over and makes it a little more comfortable. And both of those features were implemented based on direct customer feedback. Um, so like I said, you're gonna have an opportunity Drive Blue Cruise a little later. I'm happy the sun's provided me the opportunity to actually show you this because earlier there was a lot of clear. But um, I just wanted to show you kind of what it looks like when you actually get into Blue Cruise hands free driving mode. Um, it's pretty simple. You just need to be on the highway. Uh, when you're on the highway, you just press uh, activate the adaptive cruise control. Um, once the adaptive cruise control is activated uh, and Blue Cruise activates, you'll see the center cluster just kind of take over the blue uh, hue. 
and then you'll see this hands-free icon on the left side. And that's when you know you can take your hands off the wheel, obviously still paying attention to the road in front of you. If you don't see this, it means you're still in hands-on mode. And I'll talk to you a little bit more around lunch, uh, give you some kind of tips and tricks uh, before you actually go into your Blue Cruise route. Um, so all that being said, uh, Blue Cruise, we've gotten some great feedback from customers who are loving it uh, for long road trips, as well as from the daily commuting stop and go traffic scenarios. Um, and it really makes the, the, you know, the driving more enjoyable and less stressful, which is why it's a perfect complement to this 2025 Explorer. Um, that being said, I'm gonna pass it to Alex, who's gonna give you a rundown on the Ford Digital. Uh, my name is Alex Blue, and I'm a senior product manager of the Ford Digital Experience team. I'm uh, joined by Alex Sid over here. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our Ford Digital Experience today, uh, where we come from and where we're going. So, uh, the Ford Digital Experience uh, is really great transformation over where we've been. Uh, and I'm truly happy to be here today to talk about the Explorer because it's really a personal part of me. You've heard from everybody here, you've heard from Eric, you've heard from Kelly, you've heard from Justin, from um, Andrew as well, about uh, the, the personal nature of this vehicle. Um, and, and I think Kelly uh, said the best about um, it being a you Ford know, Explorer customer. So I've been a customer for four years. Um, it's the vehicle that I, I brought my daughter home from the hospital. From the hospital. Um, and being from Chicago and also living here in Michigan, it's kind of a perfect combination of those two things. So super personal, super fun for me to be able to work on uh, this vehicle as well over the past couple of years. So the Explorer is the first Ford portfolio vehicle. Experience. Like I said, it's a substantial shift forward uh, for us. We spent a lot of time talking to customers and trying to figure out what customers want in their cluster, in their digital experience, uh, what they expect to see. One of the things that really came through over the past uh, five years, I'd say, before the pandemic, was that people expect their, their experiences, their apps, their services, whatever they call it, doesn't really matter, uh, to be present everywhere, uh, regardless of it's not just your phone anymore. It's your laptop, it's your personal computer, it's your tablet, your smart devices in your house, it's everywhere. Um, that portability of experience is really important for people. Those apps and services that they come to love and are sort of essential to their daily life, whether it's in the office or personal, always be connected to their family, their friends, their, their life, their age. Um, it has to be everywhere. And, and we want to offer that opportunity for customers to be in their vehicle as well. The Ford Digital Experience does exactly that. It, it brings these apps services and experiences directly to our customers. And it's a really substantial shift forward for us. Now, of course, that being said, a lot of time people are, are driving. That's what like you're in the car. You're probably driving the vast majority of the time in the car. And our embedded navigation is really one of the key focal points of what we wanted to do with the digital experience. And I can't say enough about how great the design team did here with making this embedded navigation experience really particular um, Eric's team uh, doing great work on Blue Cruise to make it a really immersive experience. We when you're driving just on the highway or around your, your local town, um, it looks really great. It's, it's in the center stack that you want there, and it's always in the cluster. And the cluster really makes it a great experience too, going from um, an older vehicle to a newer vehicle with an absent cluster or something like that. Not, you know, it's, just, it's so great for the eyes of the experience. And to Dustin's point, um, the location of the screen In motion, we have lots of experiences too that people have come to love um, in other ways, on their phone or just um, around town. So screaming on, um, spot on, tune in, I heart rate, and it does. Um, all available directly embedded in the vehicle. Um, and embedded in the vehicle is a big change. It, it makes life really easy to jump in the vehicle, press one button, you go. And there's your, there's your favorite songs, your audio books. I use Audible and like Spotify all the time for audio books too. So for me, to get into the vehicle to go, it's, it's, it's a huge, huge change. Um, we have other apps and experiences too that we're launching for in motion moments too. Um, we have an app uh, called Road Map Travel that we've launched that uh, brings audio stories to people as they pass through uh, points of interest of their vehicle passing by a point of interest. Um, audio stories will have to be played of course if you want to or can't. Uh, it provides a nice sort of way of learning about the world around. So in motion is great. Lots of cool new experiences and services coming that way. We also have stationary ones too, which, which are these sort of 10% of the times that people are in the vehicle. They're waiting to pick up their kids from soccer practice from the tournaments. Uh, they're taking them all the way from themselves before they jump into a meeting and work. Again, of course, it could be anything. Uh, we see those times really increase over the past couple of years. And in 
many ways, the whole digital experience actually gets even better in those stages and moments, too. Um, so we launched uh, a game to our customers earlier in the year, Asphalt Dice, for the Super Racing game, that takes a minute or two to play a race. It's just a quick step out of your other kind of experiences and into this just world of racing right here. Uh, we've got video streaming. We've got YouTube, we've got Amazon Prime Video, Peacock, Max, uh, and all those video streaming services and, and movies and shows you can watch. Uh, again, for a couple of minutes here and there, and you're over here just stationary for a couple of minutes. There are others too. The Google Play Store provides an immense number of these apps. Uh, we have Spot here, uh, and a couple other apps that are about short play and trying to figure out what you're going to do in advance. You don't need to do it on your laptop or your phone, you can simply do it right in your cluster right When you get there, there's your vehicle's location services, so you can also just get access to parking and all kinds of other things. So we are really big believers. Launching here uh, in our vehicle. Uh, this is WebEx, and it's a it's a productivity um, office app. Now, WebEx is really great for me personally because I have about a forty five minute commute, uh, and this allows me to take meetings uh, on the road on the way into the office. Um, it gives me time back to my day. It allows me to take meetings with people very directly. Um, it, it has great connectivity, great services for people who are in their browser on their phone and elsewhere. They they often have no idea that you're in the car. Um, what you're seeing right now is my video because you're parked. So when you're parked, you can actually get participant in video, which means you can see other people who choose to turn the camera on, uh, which is nice. And another thing that's really nice is you can actually get um, the presentations of other people. So if somebody's presenting a PowerPoint, a spreadsheet, or just looking at the room where they're in, um, you can get all of that when you're parked. When you're in motion, um, the video will go away for safety purposes, uh, but your audio will remain. Um, and of course, you can mute and unmute like you would normally uh, very, very seamless and very directly embedded to the vehicle. So the whole, uh, the nature of the sound system means that you get uh, the mean and sound really well, really robust. Um, and it's something that we believe in really well, uh, really importantly too about um, the productivity and the sort of office space. So we're gonna continue to offer apps and services in this space, new experiences to help uh, get people's uh, time back uh, and make their uh, their drive uh, really, really useful. 